The text for the sermon this day is taken from Galatians, the sixth chapter, specifically these verse. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the text. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As a child of God, as a Christian, you are blessed. You are blessed beyond measure. You are blessed beyond comprehension. Because every single one of you were born into sin. And yet... You stand righteous. You're holy. You are a saint. You don't have to die to be a saint. You are a saint when you were baptized. You were born unrighteous. You are righteous. You were born dead in your sins and trespasses, and yet you live in Christ. You have the, you have the knowledge of the good news, the good news, that people long for ages to know. Go all the way back again to the garden. We go back to that all the time because that's where it all starts. The man and the woman, were, when they fell into sin, they were given the promise of an offspring to crush the serpent's head. It has been suspected that they thought that Cain and Abel would be that Cain or Abel would be that offspring. Well, Cain murdered Abel, so obviously was it them. And then maybe they thought might have looked to Seth. It wasn't him. And then eventually there would be a f- huge flood, and then the promise would be restated to Abraham. And one might have thought that Isaac would be that offspring, and nope, it wasn't Isaac. It wasn't Jacob. It wasn't any of his 12 sons. And then Moses was told about a great prophet that would rise up after him. Quite a while before that happened. David was told that he would have an heir in his house who would last forever. Solomon was given the same promise. And by the way, if you don't realize, as I'm going through these, this is literally thousands of years that I'm just traveling through here. I mean... You know, give you perspective, the United States is not yet 250 years old. So we're talking thousands of years that these promises had gone and still not fulfilled. It hadn't happened. Then Isaiah would have the promise, and then it would go through to, to Daniel, all through the scriptures, and eventually in that little town of Bethlehem, it was, it came to be. The child born. And so the child was born. He rose up and he fulfilled all the scriptures that were told in the script was told in the Old Testament. He suffered, he died, he was buried. Third day he rose from the dead. For 40 days he showed himself alive. He ascended into heaven. And you know what? You know that. You're able to confess that every single Sunday. Something that generations and generations and generations longed to know. And there are many people in the world that still don't know it. You are blessed beyond measure. You're blessed by the fact that we are in a big building. Nobody has to wonder where we are at. This, nobody has to think, wonder where are those Christians worshiping. We got a sign right out front. It's a nice electric sign, so people know exactly where the Luther, where the Christians are worshiping. In fact, we're not the only one in town. There's other ones. None of us are hiding in caves. None of us are, you know, sneaking up into the, into a loft to do worship, afraid that somebody might arrest us and kill us for doing what we do. You're blessed. Veterans Day was this past Wednesday. What a reason to give thanks for, vet, for the service of our men and women. That we could do this. 
They don't give us the right to worship, but they do give us the right to worship without fear of persecution. You are blessed. But the reality is, is there are so very many in our world that have no knowledge of Christ. I'm going to use a quote from C.F.W. Walther. If you don't know who he is, anybody, was anybody ever a member of the Walther League? Okay. Usually they're older, but yes. Walther League was named after... Sorry, it, it got disenfranchised in the 70s or something like that, so that's why I know. But that was the original youth group, if you're wondering. LYF used to be Walther League. But anyways, Walther League was named after C.F.W. Walther who was the first president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And this is a quote that I came across a few years ago by Al Berry. Al Berry was the president of our synod in the 90s. He died while he was, he was in office. And this is the quote he wrote. He says, Another major duty of a synod that wants to be and remain an evangelical Lutheran synod is that it not seek its own glory. So you read that, don't read as synod, you could also read that as another major duty of a congregation that wants to be and remain an evangelical Lutheran congregation is, not, is that it not seek its own glory, but the, only the glory of God, being intent not so much on its own growth but rather on the growth of Christ's kingdom and the salvation of souls. You see, dear brethren, we are assembled here not for our own sake. We are in faith, and by this faith we hope to be saved. But there are still many millions, and actually you could say billions, because he wrote that in the 1800s, who have no faith. This is why we are here so that we might bring salvation to as many people as we possibly can, so that the sad situation in Christendom and the corruption of the poor, blind, heathen might be remedied. Only for this reason does our gracious God allow Christians to live on earth, that they might bring others to the saving faith. Otherwise, God would immediately take a Christian to heaven as soon as he is converted. Why did God not just, you know, you, why don't we have it? You get baptized, and all of a sudden, almost like a Star Trek portal just shoots you up, and boom, you're in heaven. Why are you still here? To serve his kingdom. See, if you, we remember, we all know Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. That we are saved by grace through faith and not of works, lest anyone can boast. But do you know what we often forget? The verse right after, which tells us that he prepares us beforehand to do good works. As those who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ, we are called to live, to take Gary Teese's phrase, not normal lives. We are called to be missionaries. We are called to be servants. And he has given every single one of you a unique personality, a unique part in your life, unique abilities, all of them designed to serve his kingdom. And it, it begins, the easiest place to look at, the first place is your household. It is your relationship to your, your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, your siblings, whoever. That is the first place where you are called to serve. That's the most obvious. But it also goes into your work. You work at Gomeco, you work in Midwest, you work at UBI, you work at, one of the, you work at the hospital or a hospital, you work at a school, you're a student in a school, that is where God has placed you. And one of the things is, is, you know, it talks about this, is that our a congregation wants to be and remain an evangelical Lutheran congregation, is that it seek not its own glory, but only the glory of God. 
One of the things I, don't, I think sometimes we so easily re- forget at St. Paul Lutheran Church is that we really are a sleeping giant in this, count, in this community. And I mean sleeping giant. We are all over this community. You go to the bank, we have members there. You go to the gas station, you got members there. You go to Subway, you got members there. You go to Zimmy's, you got members there. That's why I used to make a practice to work on my sermons at Zimmy's or Subway because I knew I'd run into members. It was an opportunity to minister. And not to mention, works good for writing. It's actually good sermon, good sermon writing territory. You go to, we have people that work at the hospital. When I went to the hospital just on Friday, I ran into two members right there. You go to the school, yesterday, I was in Cedar Falls, went to the, the football game, and yay, we won again. You guys are all going to get spoiled. We're going to forget what it's like to lose. But I went there, and first off, two, two of the receivers on that team, one of, our, one of our members, well, no, wait, one receiver is one of our members. That'd be, I always get Cameron and Carson mixed up, but Sharky, <laughs> um, him. And I, had, I claimed Gabe Winterode because he comes to almost every youth event. So Gabe Winterode was also out there. The guy that was in the, in the big falcon thing that's exhaustively hot, probably, and I'm always afraid he's going to fall over. And, fortunately, it's cushioned, so I guess he fall over, he'll be okay. But that's Ethan Frank, one of our youth. We, we have a number of cheerleaders. We are all over this community. And by the way, that's one of the great joys of going to so many of the events of our schools. By the way, if you want to know, I don't go there just because I love sports. And I do love sports. I go there because of those kids, to see the talent they have. You go to, especially one where it really stands out, you go to speech, go to grief speech, individual speech, when it's specifically that person who is singing or giving a speech, it's amazing the talent some of the kids have. And by the way, I don't think only the kids have it. I know parents do, grandparents do. You are an army in this community to serve this community, to bring this gospel. Luther referred, and I talked about this last week, but Luther referred to the Christians as the masks of God. You are his masks in the community. He places you where you are specifically to be his missionary, to be his servant, to be his witness. Could you imagine what our congregation could do? We truly realize how blessed we are and how amazing this gospel is. And if you think, well, most of our community is Christian, right? This last week, I stumbled across a great website, and this is kind of a response to what we talked about in our elders meeting. I was looking up on resources, things to just shoot an arm into our congregation to realize what we could be doing. And I went on to a website by a guy named Tom S. Rayner. If you don't know about him, he actually specializes in saving churches from dying. That's what he does. And on the, so I signed up for his service or whatever just because I wanted to read his articles and stuff. And one of the things that came with it was a demographic research to look in the demographics of, the, of a 20-mile drive radius of St. Paul Lutheran Church. And one of the things I found interesting is what would you guess is the largest age genera- generation in our county, in our area? I figured it would be baby boomers. It isn't. It's Generation Z. The 4 to 19 year old is the biggest generation in this community. Something I did not know. And by the way, it's also the biggest generation in this congregation. And so are millennials. That's the second biggest. Baby boomers are third. 
Did you know that? I'm not talking about attendance. I'm talking about membership. But that's not what's represented on, on attendance. See our mission field? When I did that research, they found, and they did, a, they did a study to see how often people were in church. And so they went by regular, and by the way, nowadays when they do surveys and say they're regularly in church, that usually means just monthly. Doesn't mean weekly anymore. And when I looked at it, for, Ida, for our area, so in other words, this would include, so think 20 mile drive from here, I don't think Holstein quite made that range. I don't think Odebolt did either. But I know Arthur was in there, Battle Creek was in there. And so, and Schleswig maybe, I don't know. But anyways, when you looked at it, less than 40% of our count, our, that area is regularly in church. And remember, regularly is monthly in those surveys. Again, see the mission field? It's all around you. And you're the missionaries. And he has given you abilities to do that, to be that missionary, to bring the blessings he has given to you to those who are around you. And by the way, it's not just what you do in your job. It's even what you do in your hobbies. How many, like go, how many of you like to go bowling? How many like to golf? Guess what you... Guess what? When you bowl, for example, you spend, there's a little bit of time where you're sitting there and you're waiting for the next time you bowl. Now, hopefully you're sitting there watching the other person, but probably you get into conversation. Do you know how awesome? Right there, opportunity. Talk about your faith. I mean, don't go out, don't be like, hey, now we're talking. Hey, let's talk about you. Look for the opportunities. Let the door open. It's there if you pay attention. Or how about, same thing, golf course. You get on that cart. And if, if you're like me, you might be on the cart, you might be really long golfing, so you have a lot of time to talk. But you get on that cart and you're traveling to wherever, or maybe you're walking, maybe you're, you're, being, you're being good exercising, and you walk around. Opportunity. One of the things I came across, how many of you are video, like video gamers? Like video games. I know some of our kids do. I know they do. Because when I brought up Among Us on Wednesday night, they are like, oh, oh, I love Among Us. So, if you want to... Yeah, anyways. Video games, believe it or not, is a way. Parents, if you have a kid that likes to play video games, sit down and play with them every now and then. You'd be surprised what you can talk about with your kids. You might get conversations you'd never expect you to have. But there's also, there's this, this thing they came across. There's a whole slew of pastors that do this. There's a pastor, they actually have a worship service on what's called Twitch, which is a streaming service. They have 300 people a week tune in to watch worship services, and then when they're done, they game together. Like they have, they have, they have praise music, they have a sermon, they have scriptures read, and if there's really tough questions people want to ask, they answer them, and you will be amazed the questions that get discussed on there. Last week, they did a fundraising drive for the Children's Miracle Network, so children's hospitals. Do you know how much they raised? $13 million. See how you can use your hobbies even to serve the gospel? You're an army. And God has given you so many places to do as that scripture said where we began with. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are the household of faith. You are surrounded by opportunity. And understand, I know we fail. I fail. I know I do. That's the wonderful thing about the grace of our God. That's why we keep coming back here. Because I guarantee it, we failed over and over every, every week. That's why God doesn't say, you know, come to church when you feel like it. He wants you to keep coming because he knows you're going to fail throughout the week. 
He invites you back over and over to receive his grace, especially in the Lord's Supper, to forgive you, to strengthen you, because he knows you failed. He gives you forgiveness. And he enables you, and he says, That's, I already forgave you. Yes, you failed. I forgave you. The blood, my, the blood on the cross, it's washed you clean. You are forgiven. Now go forth, my son, my daughter, and go serve again. And you fail again, come back again and receive this grace. You've been blessed beyond measure. So may we bring that blessing to our neighbors, to our community, in Jesus' name.